everyone, it's Michael, and by popular demand, I am going to do an update video on my orchid flasks. Now, of course, as you saw, and if you didn't, I'll link the video below, but um, I have a flask of my Encyclia tampensis here, and over this way, I have my Epidendrum magnoliae and Encyclia tampensis alba hybrid. So I wanted to kind of give you a quick update about what's going on with these two. Now I'm going to take you in closer and you can see things are going really, really well. Um, surprisingly well. I received these and got them potted on November 11th. And they're just trucking right along. It's been more than a month and they seem to be doing just fine. The biggest issue you can see was a little bit of rot at the tip of these leaves. So you can kind of see right there and right there that uh, there was a little bit of dieback. And that was happening on this tray as well. So you can kind of, let me see if I can find a, a good spot. Oh, here we are. I'll take you in on this guy. So you can see right there. Things were starting to rot right at the tips of the leaves and I wasn't quite sure why that was happening. But then I realized that I wasn't giving them enough moving air. So those giant domes that I purchased, I've just removed all together and I removed them pretty early in the process. Um, and ever since I took those off, they seem to be doing just fine. Now, as crazy as it may sound, these little guys have an adaptation to semi-hydroponics that is awful similar to their big brothers and sisters. Um, it's almost as if their existing root system isn't terribly viable, so they have to put out new roots. But you can see that that, that process really is happening. You can see there's some green root tubes down there that are just starting to form. And right at the top of the plant, you can see these little, little nubbins that are just starting to form ever since they've been placed into semi-hydro. Here's a few more examples, but you can kind of see they're just starting to establish themselves. There's a great example right there, a little green root tip. Um, but it is scary because I, it's just a completely different experience with baby plants. Um, you can also see that one of the problems is there is a little bit of mineral buildup that is starting to occur on the Leca pellets. Um, so I will show you how I water and how I'm going to resolve that matter. So for all of these little seedlings, what I like to do is I take them out of the tray one by one and you can kind of see the nutrient solution kind of creating some buildup within the tray here. So what I wanna do is make sure that I give these all a really good flush. So I take them out individually like so and I just place them in the sink. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a tepid flow of water to just give them a quick shower. Now I realize that this typically makes them more liable for rot, but I do use a steady source of airflow right after I go through this process, so it's not that huge of a risk. So I'm gonna make sure the water is nice and tepid. And I'm just gonna create a nice little rain shower over the plants. Now that that process has been completed, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out the tray. And as I mentioned before, what I want to do is reduce the overall nutrient solution that these plants are getting to prevent there from being any real buildup. That was one of my biggest oversights was thinking that these plants would require the same nutrient solution that my full grown plants do. They can't metabolize that much, so I'm actually going to cut that nutrient solution roughly in half. So what I do is I take my existing nutrient solution that I've mixed for my adult plants and I create a thin layer at the very bottom of the tray. And once I have that in place, I'm gonna to top off to get to about a centimeter of water in the bottom with just plain distilled water. Perfect. So now that I've effectively reduced the concentration of nutrient solution, I can go ahead and take my rinsed orchid babies and place them right back into the water reservoir, like so. So once the plants are watered, they go on this shelf right here. So this is right next to an east facing window. They don't get any direct light, but they do get a lot of bright shade. So that seems to allow them to continue growing just fine. Now over this way, you might recall, this was my original potting method for these little flasks. Now I want to take you in closer so you can see why I do not believe that this is a great option any longer. So in a way that is quite similar to the giant dome, this is just maintaining too much humidity. So when I take you in, you can see the plants are still alive, but look at the rot that is happening and look at the mold that is developing along the ends of the roots. Um, you can see that there's already been some die off in this container, but I have had zero die off in the trays that I have left open. So that is a big indicator to me and I would have really thought it was the inverse. I would think that a sustained amount of humidity would keep them happy and healthy but it does appear to be counterproductive when it is overdone. And I was opening it up, I was giving it 15 minutes of air a day, um, and it still does not seem to enjoy it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna salvage the plants that haven't died um, and that I think could have a beautiful life, 
and then I'm gonna go ahead and kind of scrap this system entirely. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, thank you so much for choosing to spend your time with me. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, leave it in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye, guys.